Hi, yogis. I'm Nicole from Nicole Star Studios. Thank you so much for joining me for our yin yoga practice today. Please grab your props, blankets, bolsters, blocks, straps, eye pillows. You do not have to have props for a yin yoga class, but I will be queuing them. Let's go ahead and grab those. Have them handy. You are welcome to play your own music or if you would like to follow along with me on my Spotify account, you will find a yin, Y-I-N playlist with the letter A in parentheses. So go ahead and start that now, making sure it's not on shuffle. Scoot you to the side and then come to a seated position. You can sit up on a couple blankets, maybe a bolster, whatever allows those knees to fall below your hips. And then maybe even rocking side by side, forward and back, seeing if we can get that pelvis. Imagine that your pelvis is like a bowl. We don't want it to dump forward or dump backwards, allowing that pelvis to be nice and level flipping our palms facing up onto our knees or thighs. You can practice whatever mudra, whatever hand gesture of choice you would like. Or since today we are gonna be focusing on opening through our heart, practicing self-love and self-compassion, we're gonna tap into this anahata chakra, our heart chakra. The mudra, the hand gesture that's associated with that is where you can place your thumb in between that first and second knuckle. Thumb in between first and second knuckle allowing those to rest palms facing up on your knees, allowing the elbows to be in line with the shoulders, sitting nice and tall, maybe closing the eyes, taking a deep breath in, cleansing sigh. allowing our breath to invite us into this moment, into our heart. Remember there is no breath work, no pranayama associated with yin. So practice whatever feels most organic to you. Allowing that breath to be an anchor, anchoring us in the here and now. And as we are invited into this present moment, Tap into the heart, setting an intention for your practice today. Inhaling our arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhaling hands to heart center. Allowing my words to become your words as we open our practice today. I am a vessel for divine healing light, seeking the best and ultimate healing. Prayer hands to mind's eye. Thank you for this divine healing light. Guide me well. Prayer hands back to heart. Releasing palms facing down on knees or thighs. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. You can either scoot your feet to the side or roll forward as we come into a tabletop position. Wrists in line with shoulders, knees in line with hips. Since we are gonna be practicing a lot of heart openers today, I just wanna warm up our spine by flowing through some cat-cows. So inhale, lower the belly, reaching through the top of your head and the tailbone. Exhaling as we round, draw belly button in, chin to chest, pushing shoulders away from one another. Moving at your own pace with your own breath. 
If when you round your back, you wish to shift backwards, then by all means do so. If you lower your belly and you wish to shift forward, then by all means do so. Again, this is your practice. I am simply your guide. Maybe you wanna add some organic circles here with your hips, your ribs. Your neck, shoulders. If you've gone one side, just make sure you even out both sides. Coming to neutral, if you're feeling a lot of pressure under your knees, you can take a blanket, open it up, place it under your knees. You can also take your mat, fold your mat slightly and place that under your knees. Having either the tops of your feet on the mat or your toes curled under, walking your arms forward, resting your chest down onto the mat. You can bring your forehead onto the mat or your chin onto the mat in this puppy, pose. You can have your arms extended long. You can have them out to the side a little bit more. Just see what feels best to you and your body. So if you see me come out of the pose in asana, it doesn't mean I want you to come out of the pose. It simply means I am either going to set a timer on my watch or I'm going to read something. I know sometimes it feels like when we are practicing, especially these yin yoga poses or restorative poses, it feels like maybe the teacher is not timing us, but I promise you, I am. So we take about the first minute in a yin yoga pose to get into a pose, make any adjustments to honor our body, wherever our body is at that day knowing that everybody's body is different and every single day your body is different. So yoga is all about honoring ourselves, accepting ourselves as we are here and now in this moment. So maybe a couple of days ago, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, you were able to practice a pose like this with a little bit more ease or maybe a little bit more tension. It's all natural. There's an ebb and flow in our practice, just like there's an ebb and flow in our being. Can you accept where you're at in this moment without judgment, honoring compassion and self-love? It doesn't mean that one was better than the other. It's just different. So again, that first minute we settle in and then surrender into stillness, knowing the difference between moving a little deeper into a pose and fidgeting. Resist the urge to fidget. So in yoga, you'll find the first edge, that first moment of resist resistance, that first moment of constraint. Soften open, allow. To count by touching. We need to count by touching, not by adding and subtracting. When we count with our eyes, we stall the heart. For the eyes can see clearly what is broken without ever feeling the break. The mind can calculate the loss without ever sewing up the wound, without touching the life coming apart before us. We can race to rebuild before the wrecked dream ever hits the ground. While this makes us resilient and efficient as ants, it also keeps us from ever living in what we build. One more minute and a half. Alas, what makes us precise and efficient can also begin a life of neurosis, not touching what we see, not feeling what we know. This is how the mind skips the heart's step, how we forget that blood 
on the news is real and that the cry from the street is attached to something living. Five, four, slow down, three, two, one. Coming out of the pose ever so slightly as you pull the floor toward you, releasing your belly all the way onto the mat. Pause in the sphinx. You can walk your elbows a little bit further forward. You can stay here. You can also extend your arms out to the side and then come up in Sphinx. You can also grab a bolster and place a bolster under your chest. You can place that under your hips or maybe a rolled up blanket. You can keep your legs straight, or if you wanna add a little hip opener here, you can walk your knees a little bit further apart, bring the bottom of your feet together. You can have that a little closer to your body or further away. You can have the top of your head reaching toward the ceiling. You can release your head back. You can even release your head down. Again, one version is not better than the other. It is all about honoring where we're at in this moment with acceptance, compassion, self-love, self-healing, self-growth. What is your heart asking you to do right now? making any adjustments, settling in, in stillness. Surrendering our heart open. I remember waking after rib surgery to find a dear friend at the foot of my bed. I was elated to have arrived on the other side and called to her, but she was staring off. I knew in that instant she was already mourning me. And so she missed me coming alive. She was already preparing for life without me. And so the deeper closeness awaiting us was never felt or worn. We think we protect ourselves from taking inventory and moving on, but we only spin our web tighter. Recently, another Fred had a dream in which we were building a home with sturdy shelves for the things we loved. She tried to count the shelves but couldn't keep the numbers in her head. She had to go over and count the shelves by touching each one. 
mysteriously as she did this, the shelves kept multiplying. Her touch made more shelves possible. Such a profound and simple lesson. To count with our hands brings us deeper than all counting. And numbers give ways to notes and sums give ways to song. We need to count by touching, not by adding and subtracting. One more minute and a half. Can you feel your body touching the earth? The touch of your hands rooting into Mother Earth. Can you sense those roots spreading deeply, connecting all things? Can you feel the beat of your heart? Can you feel the beat? Connect with the beat of Earth's center and all heart centers. Love them, love them, love them. Bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. Five, four, three, two, one. If you are on any sort of support, move it out of the way. You can either extend your arms long or elbows out to the side, stacking your palms and your hands facing down, resting your forehead on those hands. Breathe. Be. Soften. Open. bringing your hands by your chest, curling your toes under, pushing up into a tabletop position. Resist the urge to go into child's pose because we are going to go into one more back bend before we rebound completely. Come up onto your knees, allow your knees to be hip width apart. Again, that's a hip bone width apart. So about two fists distance apart. If you're feeling pressure under your knees, you can take a blanket, open it up, place it under your knees, or again, fold the mat. Have your props handy, your blocks handy. You can bring them to the outside of your feet or the inside of your feet. You can have the tops of your feet onto the mat or curl your toes under, whatever feels best in your knees. Sometimes when you curl your toes under, it takes a little pressure off of your knees. Bringing your hands to your sacrum, so the upside down triangle at the base of your spine. You can have your fingertips pointing down or your fingertips pointing up, whatever feels best in your wrist. Engaging the quadriceps, the muscles in the front of your thighs, taking your pelvis, drawing your whole pelvis forward. Imagine there's a string on your heart. 
lifting the heart to the ceiling and pause. So from here, I want you to imagine that your ribs are a boat. We want this boat to float. So we want to bring our ribs away from our hips, but we don't want the boat to float away. So you want to anchor it with the bottom of your rib cage. So there's going to be some space there. So imagine all of this is like water and the boat is floating on the water, but we don't want the boat to float away. So the bottom of your rib cage is what will anchor you down. So allow the boat to float, remembering the anchor, pause, broaden your collarbone, elbows toward one another. Maybe you wish to open up a little bit more. If when you fold back, your hips come back, or you create any kind of compression here, just come out of the camel pose ever so slightly. You can keep your hands where they are. Maybe you wish to bring your hands on those blocks. Maybe you wanna bring your hands on your heels. Maybe you want the tops to be on the mat or the toes curled under. Again, if you come back and your hips draw back, just come out of the pose slightly. Honor your neck, you can release your head back. Now, if when you do that, you feel a tight constriction in your throat, in your neck, just come up slightly. So I'm gonna show you the difference. So see how my head is dropped back and you can feel, see, still hear me talking openly. Now, if I let it go back too far, you see what it does to my throat? That means I've gone a little too far. Almost there. Holding here for five, four, three, two, one. Pause, imagine there is a grapefruit between your chin and your chest, hold on to the grapefruit, slowly bring your palms back to the sacrum, pause. So we're coming out of that intense back bend. Either keeping your toes curled under or bringing the tops of your feet to the mat, sitting back on your heels. Now, if when you do this, you're feeling a lot of pressure in your knees, you can take a block, the block can be at any height. As many, as many blocks as you'd like under your sits bones, coming into our saddle pose. I know there is a version of saddle where we go into a um, go back, where we lean back, but I want us to use this as a way of rebounding out of that intense back bend as neutralizing our spine. So again, maybe you wish to sit between your heels, on your heels. Rotating your palms facing up on your knees or thighs. Palms can be open. You can practice that Anahata Mudra again, if you would like. Eyes can be open or closed. And as we rest here, as we pause, as we neutralize, tap into your heart, drop into your heart. How does it feel? What is it saying to you? Heart openers, back bends can be very invigorating. They also allow us, allow our heart to shed the mass that they tend to hide behind the walls, the shields, the veils.
Does your heart feel open, free, unguarded? That can feel a little intimidating, a little vulnerable, a little scary. Tap into all that you are feeling in this moment without judgment. As we rest here, as we pause here, let's silently repeat some affirmations. Affirmations are spoken in present tense to tell our mind, our heart, that it's already happening. Silently repeating, I am enough. I am light. I am love. When you are ready, release the mudra, palms facing down, take a breath, give it back. Come into tabletop. Bringing your knees apart, big toes together. On the exhale, drawing your sits bones back toward the heels as we stretch long through those arms in child's pose. Now, child's pose is a forward fold. Anytime you bring your torso toward your legs, that is considered a forward fold, no matter how neutral your spine is. So since we did practice a lot of back bends, if this child's pose is not serving you, then you can lay on your mat. When you lay on your mat, you're actually practicing a slight back bend, a slight heart opener. So see what serves you best. And so profoundly breathe. Breathing, being. Our breath is associated with our heart chakra, our heart center. As we breathe in this moment, allow the front of your heart to connect with Mother Earth, uniting all heart centers. The front of our heart is what we share with the external world. But don't forget to breathe into the back of your heart the back of your heart is that special place saved for just you. That is the seat of self-love, of self-compassion, of self-acceptance. So is that where you felt some constriction before or now? Is the back of your heart where you felt some tension? Tension. 
attention is our body's way of seeking attention. Where attention goes, healing goes. Continue to breathe into the back of your heart. Two and a half more minutes. Five, four, three, two, one. Coming up to tabletop, releasing all the way onto your mat. Extending your arms out to the side. So you can have your arms straight or you can cactus your arms, creating these goal posts, palms facing down, bringing your left hand by your chest, roll onto your right side. So you can stay here. Maybe you want to step your left foot back, bringing the sole of the left foot onto the mat. Your left hand can stay where it is, or maybe you want to bring the back of that hand to the sacrum. And this broken wing pose. As an inlet cannot close itself to the sea that shapes it, the heart can only wear itself open. One of the hardest blessings to accept about the heart is that in the image of life itself, it will not stop emerging through experience. No matter how we try to preserve or relive what has already happened, the heart will not stop being shaped. This is a magnificent key to health that despite our resistance to accept what we've lost is behind us, despite our need at times to stitch our wounds closed by reliving them, and despite our heroic efforts to preserve whatever is precious, Despite all our attempts to stop the flow of life, the heart knows better.
one more minute. Five, four, three, two, one. If your leg is bent, extend it long. Release back onto the mat. Pause. Breath in, breath out. Extending left arm to the side. Bring your right hand by chest, rolling over onto our left side. Again, either stacking legs or you can bend that right knee, bringing that right foot behind you. You can take the back of your right hand, bring it to the sacrum, the upside down triangle at the base of your spine. the heart, it knows that the only way to truly remember or stay whole is to take the best and worst into its tissue. Despite all our intentions not to be hurtful again, the heart keeps us going by moving us ever forward into health. Though we walk around thinking that we can direct it, our heart, it's endlessly shaped like the land, often against our will. One more minute and a half. Five, four, three, two, one. If your leg is bent, straighten the leg, extending your arm out to the side, rolling back onto your stomach, pausing, breathing. Bringing your hands by your chest, curling your toes under, lifting up into a tabletop position. You can go into a traditional plank pose, or you can come down onto your forearms 
to crocodile. Adding a little engagement here in our core to help balance out those heart openers. Five, four, three, two, one. Coming into tabletop, either cross at the shins and sit back or kick your feet over to the side. Extending our legs long out front. If you're feeling some pressure in your lower back, you can take a blanket and sit, place that under your sitting bones. This will help just add a little bit of height, which help may relieve some pressure in your back. If you're feeling some pressure in your knees, you can take a blanket, roll it up and place it under your knees. Remember, if this was our young active class, we would fire up our legs by flexing through the feet. But in yin, we allow the legs to kind of hang out a little bit. And instead of in our yang class where we extend through the spine, in yin, we round into a lot of these poses. So as you round, release, you can place a blanket, black or bolster under your forehead. Finding that first moment of resistance, then settling in, pausing, and as we hold these asanas, as we hold these poses, maybe you soften through the restraints, opening, surrendering. And as you soften, see what is set free. You've heard me say it before, often the issues hide in our tissues. So as we hold these poses, as we bypass the muscles and get into that fascia, those tissues, maybe something that has been hidden for a short amount of time or a long amount of time. Maybe as you soften, as you let down your guard, your mask, your shields, Maybe something is set free. Can you view all that is set free without judgment? Wrapping it in your loving light. Maybe it's uncomfortable. Maybe it's dark. We do not have to fear the dark when we believe in our light. Stay in the light, yogis. Swimming in our love. I lose sight of us at times. The way that fish can't see the ocean the price of lovers swimming in their love. When we first fall in love, the powerful force of possibility grips us and pulls us along deeper and deeper into the days. When first shaping the bonds of love, we look at each other with incredible freshness and appreciation who is before us. We stare into our new lover's eyes the way we might an overwhelming painting in which we imagine that secrets of life have been stroked thickly. Inevitably though, as we grow intimate, we begin to lose sight of each other. And there comes a day when we no longer see our loved one as others do. Now we see the inside of their face up close. Now we swim in each other like a mysterious river in which we sometimes see ourselves and sometimes soothe ourselves and sometimes drink of each other. Eventually, we climb into the painting we once stared at with a pounding heart. And from inside the painting, we can forget that there was ever a painting. This is how we can take each other for granted. 
This is how we can imagine that the music is gone. But as the reward for being drawn into the sea is to swim with the waves, the reward for being drawn into the depth of another is to feel each other rather than to see each other. This is the paradox of intimacy. On the way, we see what we dream of feeling, but once there, we feel from the inside what we can no longer readily see. Swimming in our love. Four, three, two, one. Gently roll up as if you're picking up a strand of pearls, one vertebra at a time, allowing your head to come up last. Pause. Sitting tall. Inhale, arms up overhead, palms touch. Flipping our palms away from one another, releasing those hands down bringing the soles of your feet onto the mat. So we're gonna practice reclined butterfly by bringing the bottom of our feet together, knees apart. If you have a bolster, you can use the bolster behind you to add a back bend. Now listen to your body, listen to your heart. We practice a lot of heart openers today, a lot of back bends. So if your back, if your body is like, mm -mm, I am all done with back bends for the day, then do not use a bolster. To intensify the back bend, you would lay the bolster flat to decrease the intensity of the back bend, you can take a block any height and place it under the top end of the bolster. Bottom of your feet together, knees apart, release down. Palms up beside you or palms down beside you. Again, you do not have to use this bolster. Whatever serves you best. Staying porous. Be patient toward all that is unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. I am jogging in the city on a hot summer day and my legs are in rhythm, carrying me without my guidance through small crowds past roses and bus stops. I begin to think about my struggle not to give myself away. When growing up, I had to check myself at the door like a coat in order to relate to others. Often, I had to pretend to be less than I was in order to be loved. For years, I would shelve my, my light to take care of others. Like a fireman, I drop whatever I was doing to rush into the rescue. For so long, the choice seemed only to stay open and lose myself or to close up and cut others off. But today, while running freely through the streets, close to others, but not entangled, I realize that I am learning after many attempts that I can stay close and porous, caring and present without holding everyone's anxiety and without going underground. At least 
I can try. Four, three, two, one. Either stay here or you can bring the soles of your feet onto the mat and extend your legs long. And to recline fish if you are using a bolster. If you are not using a bolster, you can stay in recline butterfly or you can take a block and come into supported bridge placing the block at any height under your sacrum the upside down triangle at the base of your spine you can have your knees bent or straighten out your legs seeing what serves you I am dripping and breathing like a small horse. It is clouding over. It begins to rain slightly. I move through the beautiful people and ask for a hot dog with mustard and sauerkraut. As I chew this simple food, rain from the sky meets rain from my body. And in the rain, sweating, the tang of sauerkraut on my lip, I feel joy. Others shuffle by. Today, there is no room for worthlessness. One more minute and a half. Five, four, three, two, one. Bringing the soles of our feet onto the mat, picking our hips up in the air, releasing them back down. If you're in supported bridge, you can scooch the block out of the way. If you're using the bolster, go ahead and come back up, extend your legs long. Arms up overhead, palms touch, flipping the palms away from one another, releasing the hands down and scooching your support out of the way. Bringing the soles of our feet onto the mat, releasing all the way down, knees to chest and gently rock side by side. You can make circles so that your knees stay together or apart and then together. 
And then once you go one way, just make sure you go the opposite way. Knees to chest as we rock side by side, massaging our spine. On the exhale, draw nose to knees, squeeze and into a ball, giving yourself that well-deserved hug. Squeeze everything really, really tight. Take a deep breath in. Release, letting it go. Legs beside you, arms beside you. Maybe a bolster or blanket under your knees. Maybe eye pillow on your eyes. Allowing your feet to fall away from one another. Relax ankles, lower legs, knees, upper legs, hips, legs top to bottom, bottom to top, the whole pelvis, abdominal muscles, chest, spine, back, torso, top to bottom, bottom to top, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms of hands, arms and hands, top to bottom, bottom to top, neck, jaw, allowing the tongue to fall from the roof of the mouth, inner ears, outer ears, cheeks, eyes, eyebrows, space between the eyebrows, mind's eye, forehead, top of the head, scalp, back of the head, inside the head, brain stem, Downstairs brain, upstairs brain, right side brain, left side brain, sensing the brain whole, integrated, surrender brain, forehead, outside the head and face, whole, body, soften open with a deep audible sigh. <sighs> Welcome to Shavasana. Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Gently wiggle fingers and toes, reaching arms overhead, legs straight, making circles with your wrists and ankles. Keeping your arms overhead, bring the soles of your feet onto the mat. Right arm overhead, left arm over chest, roll onto your right and pause in the fetal position. Pressing off with your left hand, return to a seated position, sitting tall. Anahata mudra, 
eyes closed. Breath in. Breath out. Inhaling arms down, around, and up, gathering the energy of our practice today. Exhaling hands to heart center. Reminding your heart of its intention. Sealing it here with the final ohm. Inhale. Oh. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for our practice today. I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I'm Nicole from Nicole Star Studios. Please um, note that these classes are contribution based. So there is a link in the description and I would love to hear from you. So there's also a survey if you'd like to fill out so I can get some feedback just to make sure that you get exactly what you are looking for. Thank you again, yogis. Till next time, stay in the light.